Hello, welcome to Colonial RV, where today we're excited to show you the all-new 2019 Winnebago Outlook. This is the 22E floor plan, which is one of five available floor plans that Winnebago currently builds on the Ford Class C cutaway chassis. Now, as for the E-Series, did you know it currently holds a title for the second longest production line, still operating today after 59 years in Ohio? Now, for your real history buffs that like to go back even further in time, we stand here today 102 years after Ford produced their one-ton chassis, which is the Model TT, and had a reinforced rear axle, enabling it to carry more weight. If only Henry could see his E350 chassis now, I'm sure he'd be driving a Winnebago, and who knows, maybe even a 22E. Come on, let's take a closer look. At first glance at the 22E, you will notice this is 24 foot 2 inches in length, and it's an RV that has no slide outs. Now as for the outlook facts, the 22E comes well equipped with the V10, 305 horsepower Triton engine, the engine's paired with Ford's 6 speed transmission and 150 amp alternator, the E350 chassis has got a 158 inch wheelbase, an exterior length of 24 foot 2 inches, a width of 8 foot 5 inches, height of 10 foot 9 to the highest point, with an interior height of 6 foot 10. There's a 37 gallon fresh water tank, a 41 gallon black and a 41 gallon gray tank, the LP holds 18 gallons, fuel is 55, you have a GVWR rating at 11,500 pounds, a GCWR rating of 18,500 pounds, five seatbelts, and as far as warranty, Ford's powertrain is five years, 60,000 miles with a three year, 36 bumper to bumper, and from Winnebago, you have a one year, 15,000 miles, as well as a three year, 36 on their superstructure, and 12 years parts on the roof. Now before we show you everything inside the 22E, we just wanted to mention one thing that's important to you and every family that travels is safety. We're going to show you that a little bit on the outside, but just to mention the Ford chassis does have ABS brakes and has dual airbags for the driver and passenger. And just like our homes, we have a fire extinguisher in the entrance. We have propane, smoke, and carbon monoxide detectors in the ceiling and down below. In addition, there's a child tether for a small infant or anyone that needs a booster seat. There are five seat belts, which is mentioned on the occupant cargo carrying capacity, that yellow sticker. And that's just important information before we get to have some fun inside and take a look. Now here in the entrance, you're gonna notice there is a nice grab bar coming in. Uh, that's often requested by a lot of customers when they come into any RV. This is, you'll see as well, it has a, a little bit lower step and there is no uh, mechanical steps outside the Outlook. So it's great, just come in nice and, and easy with the three step up. Uh, coming into the entrance of the coach. Right underneath us in this panel for the house batteries are your NAPA, the Group 24. These are uh, deep cycle 12 volt batteries. There is a switch here which will turn on everything inside the coach. And again, we're not talking about household current, uh, but that's just your DC batteries. These compartments, as you can see, they sit in. They are vented uh, to the bottom of the coach. You're always going to want to have batteries vented in a compartment and not enclosed. And that's just conveniently opened and closed with this little latch you would just simply push this little button and it pops open. You do have your coach battery, your awning controls, here switches on the interior, and then you also have your main light switch when you come into the coach as well in the entrance. Now, before we go ahead and take a look at the, the kitchen and, and the, the sleeping area, we just wanna mention when you come in a small coach without a slide, you can see how open and bright it is. You have extended windows, LED lighting. You have nice vinyl flooring, which is great to keep it clean. If you're going to have kids, you're going to have pets, or even for adults when you spill that last beverage in the evening, it's very easy to, to mop up and, and clean it up nicely with no carpet under the dinette and throughout. You also have nice vinyl ceiling. Uh, again, you have a nice white uh, ceilings with the LED lighting. Uh, so that just makes for a very warm, inviting uh, interior. This coach we did order in the Mystic color pattern. So that's going to be all of the color tones by Winnebago and the backsplash and then your valances is the Mystic as well as the glaze Kona cabinetry, which you see, which is uh, handcrafted in Forest City, Iowa. Uh, just gives you a real nice wood feel to the coach. Here in the kitchen, you'll get to see you have a nice double bowl recessed sink. You got Winnebago's thermoformed uh, countertops. You have a nice little window with shades here. You also have a beautiful black splash here, uh, just to complement uh, the rest of the countertops. Winnebago, you can see, offer you a lot of nice cabinetry to put all of your belongings in the kitchen area that's always welcomed. Drawer space, little drawers you got under the sink. Here you have a, a duplex outlet. This is GFI controlled, so it's something that technicians always tell you to check if in case you did uh, pop a breaker. 
Uh, as far as the oven, uh, this is a stove top only. It's a three burner. This is uh, fueled by your propane tank, which we're going to show you when we head outside. Uh, you'll notice there is no oven beneath it. Um, this is just great additional storage. Not everybody is always going to cook a turkey or lasagna, uh, but in an RV, why not go out and bring it in? You do have for heating up a microwave. Uh, this is not a, uh, a convection oven, uh, and that's because it has a different depth to it, but it is just simply a microwave. Uh, but you can certainly fit all of the uh, TV dinners and anything you want it to heat up. You have a nice little storage area above. Again, Winnebago's trying to utilize all the space for adding storage, and you do have some additional, again, the cabinet and a drawer uh, down here below. Finishing up here in the kitchen, you're going to see Winnebago has their one little one-place control panel. Uh, you're going to have everywhere you can turn on your gas for the water heater. You can turn on your water pump if you're not hooked up to shore power. You do have your generator meter where you can start and stop it, uh, which we'll show you a little bit when we get outside. For checking your tank and your battery levels, you can simply go to each one, and it'll give you in one-third increments, letting you know uh, that what if it's empty or if your batteries are completely charged, so you can get all of that by just putting, uh, pushing all these buttons here, controlling it. You'll see right above it we have an inverter, and that's very important. We're going to talk about that because that doesn't come in every RV. The Magnum, this is a 1,000-watt inverter, which we're turning on. As you can see, the green light had just popped on. So that's, what that's going to do is it's going to give you some household AC current uh, to a few outlets in an RV. In addition, in this coach, it's going to be for the refrigerator as well. You'll see that this refrigerator, which is a double door fridge and freezer, is not a gas absorption fridge, but this is a compressor driven fridge which can operate on shore power, your generator, or the 1000 watt inverter while driving. That way your batteries won't be depleted and it'll keep everything nice and cold for as long as your trip is going to be. Now we have this little meter and we wanted to just show you a couple things. In addition to the fridge, not all of the outlets are going to be powered by this inverter. At Colonial, we always will label them so customers have easy use, and you'll see we did not have a label on that ground fault, the duplex underneath the sink. There is another outlet in addition in the bathroom. In the bed area, they are not controlled by the inverter. We do have one outlet here in the bedroom, and we'll see we put like a little INV sticker on it, which will let you know that that is controlled by the inverter. And we'll just go ahead and put the meter in, and you'll see that you have power now Whereas if we would put it to any of the other outlets I mentioned, they won't be functioning uh, unless you would pl uh, hook up to shore power. In addition to this outlet in the bedroom area, which you can use for an oxygen CPAP machine if in the middle of the night you don't have your generator running and you're in a park where you can't be plugged in, there is another outlet up front over the cab for the 32-inch TV. Uh, that would be your second inverter outlet hooked up to the 1,000-watt Magnum inverter. Now, as we move up here, you're going to see you got a nice wardrobe does have all of Winnebago's accessories and the, the front privacy curtain is stowed in here, uh, but you can put some garments and certainly have enough room as far as the depth of it uh, for hanging clothes. Underneath that, you got great storage space with the two drawers. Again, a lot of guests and customers are always asking. They love to have as much storage inside. And remember, you do have almost 2,000 pounds of occupant cargo carrying capacity uh, to fill it up inside. If it was me, I'd fill it with golf balls, but that's just, that's just me. Moving up here into the dinette area, this you'll see has the additional three seat belts. Again, driver passengers, so that makes up five. This seat is for a child which has the tether anchor, so this would be the position in case you did have a, um, a youngster that needed to be in a seat, they can be safely uh, hooked up here. This dinette, which has storage, will also break down into a bed. We're going to just show that to you quickly how that functions by removing first step are two of these cushions very easily. You'll pick up these two seating cushions just to swing down this dinette table which you'll see has two nice cup holders. It's a very easy process. You push this button, you swing the arm, lift it up and just swing it right down into its molding position. Then you can just Put the cushions back, seat belts down. And you have a, another sleeping surface uh, inside this nice little 24 foot coach. Now the main sleeping surface back here, which you'll see, this is an 80 inch. Uh, now as far as the width, it is a full size, but you can see it does have a lot of room for two adults uh, to sleep in. And it is a corner bed, and you'll see you got great lighting, 
uh, as well as a shade here. Um, you do have some e excellent storage above the bed. You have two lights that you can manually turn them on individual, and you do have another outlet in addition to the one we just spoke about. So you can certainly charge your phone with the little le uh, ledge that you have there, and it's all controlled as well as light-wise uh, right here uh, next to the bed. So very easy to get in and get out. Next to us, you'll see we've got the bathroom. Uh, there is a residential height uh, toilet. Uh, this is a hand flush control right here. Uh, you'll see they have a great surround, one piece surround in the shower. Uh, you have a shower head that you can uh, turn it on and off when you're in there uh, in the shower just to, to conserve water. You got plenty of holders here for shampoo, uh, conditioners, and soap. And as far as the height, you'll see uh, you got this is that skylight, which uh, again, we're going to show you when we get up on the roof in a few minutes. But not only does it allow light, but it also allows some additional headroom. Uh, myself standing here, uh, even though my driver's license says I'm, I'm five foot eight, I, I'd like to say I'm five foot nine or even six foot, but you can just get the idea. You got plenty of room for taller guests uh, if they're going to be showering inside an RV uh, in a bathroom of this size. Right next to the shower, Winnebago gives you a nice towel holder. You'll see they have the, the one basin sink, hot and cold, have some additional storage underneath. Another duplex outlet in case you do need some power in the bathroom. Nice little medicine chest. I, I'd like to say it's his and her, and I know where my toothbrush and, and deodorant would be up top. Uh, you got a nice towel ring, again, light switch, toilet paper holder, and then you have some nice towel hook holders right on the outside. One other thing just to mention, uh, not all motorhomes have their bathrooms ducted. Uh, Winnebago is very famous for that, just to keep the same climate that's in the RV also inside the bathroom, especially if you're showering and it's very hot outside. You don't want to have a, uh, an extra hot and steamy bathroom and not have the AC. So you'll see that they always duck their bathrooms, which is very important, uh, especially for customers that are uh, traveling in all different types of weather, as well as in colder temperatures to have heat. As we leave the bathroom and come up forward, you got a great shot of, again, the dinette that we broke down. Uh, you have some additional great storage cabinets uh, above the dinette. Lighting here, this is manual one touch, uh, so you can get some lighting with that expansive window and shades. Winnebago does give you a manual that's in every RV. It's a nice little satchel case, and this will give you all the how-tos, not only on Winnebago systems, but also on the chassis as well. As we close this, we just want to talk about one other thing, which is the uh, central air, we would like to call it. Uh, we, we do have the roof air conditioner here, which is the Mach 3. Every Winnebago you're going to see here, it's nice that they have ducts in the ceiling. Basically, the difference of this is going to be like a, uh, a central air system in our homes as opposed to having an air conditioner in the window. There are RVs that will have the main air conditioning unit uh, just sitting right above you in the ceiling. And if you are going to be running that while sleeping, naturally, it is going to be a lot louder. We just actually did a test, and we had our uh, decibel meter that we wanted to test a non-ducted ceiling as opposed to something like this with ducts. Just checking as far as normal conversation, we were at a 25 decibel difference running this air conditioner with the ducts, so a lot more quiet and comfortable for sleeping. So it's great that Winnebago still does that. All of that is controlled by the thermostat for heat and air conditioning, which is the Coleman Mach 3, which is right here on the wall. Uh, just give you settings for cool, for the fan, uh, as well as heat. You have different modes, which will be low and high, and you can automatically set the temperature that you would need all of that for the furnace is controlled by, as well as the air conditioner is right there. Coming up to the front, which we didn't get to yet, is this nice big third sleeping surface. You'll see that they have this section that you can easily pull out. Uh, this is also has the, uh, the wood forming in it, so you don't have to add anything else additional. Very, very sturdy. Uh, they do give you a ladder, which you would just latch in right here. But this is a very expansive sleeping surface. Certainly two adults would be able to sleep in here. Uh, that would basically get you up to a coach that's 24 foot. Six people can sleep comfortably. Now, one thing that's really cool as far as the cushions on the side, you'll see that this is just a regular uh, like two and a half inch cushion that makes up this bed. But on the passenger side, they actually give you a nice little storage. A lot thinner, but still makes and completes the bed. Put all your belongings in there and safekeeping, and almost you don't even know that it's there. Uh, right here, we have the 32 inch television that can swing out so that everybody inside the coach uh, can watch television. This can be controlled by that, the, uh, the King Jack TV antenna, which we're gonna get to when we get on the roof and show you that. 
All of that wiring is hooked up right here, and there's a duplex which is hooked up to the inverter that we mentioned before. So you can run this off of that, that Magnum inverter while you're driving. As you can see, we have the red light. That's because we have the inverter on right now, and we're not plugged in, and we don't have the generator running. There is a small button over here that would power the jack antenna. It's a very, very small little button uh, right next to the coaxial. When you press that, the little green light will go on, and then that would power up the antenna. If you did want to check for some local over-the-air waves digital television, depending in the market that you are in. So that would complete the whole front cab area, and you see that you do have a nice little vent as well. And we'll take a quick look at that when we get on the roof. You're going to notice that they have some buttons here for the, uh, the front cab area. As we showed you, that curtain, uh, which is a privacy curtain, you would just button that up at night if you were not uh, sitting inside the cab area and that would then give you complete privacy with all the rest of the shades inside. Now we're going to go ahead and sit up in the cab and just go over some of the quick features that Ford offers for the driver and passenger. Sitting here in the cab in the driver's seat you'll see that uh, you certainly have all of the conveniences of any other uh, Ford chassis. You do have cruise control, um, over here you do have power door locks, you have power windows, uh, so everything is power. The seat is manual, you can move it forward and back as well as adjusting the angle of the seat. Those are all manual. It's nice at Ford, you still have the handle. A lot of people getting in and getting out of the cab on driver and passenger, got a great grab handle. Uh, you both have two nice very big visors here, um, which is great and easily pops down. Uh, there's a battery boost switch, one of them uh, that we want to talk about. What that would do is in case you did drain your chassis battery, which is always separate than the house batteries, you can easily just hold that into the on position as you're turning the key. And you would do that if by accident you left your headlights or the radio on and it drained that perfectly good chassis battery. Having a battery boost is great. Having it wired to the house batteries, you don't have to worry about someone coming out uh, and jumping the vehicle for you. You do have all of your standard Ford switches, the fan for, uh, for heat and for the air conditioning. Uh, you'll see here all of the vent switches. You are going to have some additional power point as far as uh, 12 volt. Uh, list, you know, you can plug in and charge up your devices if needed. Here in the stereo, this is a touch screen. As you can see, we have the rear view camera. We can go ahead and cycle through just a couple of the features of it. Not only would it be a radio, uh, we can turn on the camera. Again, this is all touch screen. This can be on while you're driving. You can then get back into and go into some of the other settings. You know, not only the time, but all of the other features uh, for the radio. You'll notice this is Bluetooth. Uh, capability, uh, which is great so that you can talk while you're driving, uh, naturally hands-free. You are going to have a little, see this, open up this little USB um, device, so you can uh, certainly plug in a USB in addition to the, uh, the 12 volts, and you also have a uh, auxiliary uh, plug-in as well. Just going to have all the standard Ford vents here uh, for heat, as well as, again, you're always going to have the the dash air conditioner as well as the dash heater or furnace in addition to the home portion and a small coach like this uh, with shades and tinted windows you can easily control the climate just using the dash just like our, our standard cars that we do on any given day. You have a lot of great storage here in this little area as well as cup holders and that would pretty much other than uh, the driver and passenger seats being the same would round out the the cab chassis here with Ford. And here in the front of the Ford chassis You'll see the engine compartment. This is Ford's 6.8 liter, which enables it to carry a little bit more carrying capacity. We'll go into that a little bit later. This engine does not require DEF fluid, which is only for diesels. As far as engine oil, it holds seven quarts, and that's the recommended Motorcraft uh, synthetic blend. It is 7,500 mile uh, oil interval changes with this engine. Also up front, you got a nice step here. Uh, so if you ever need to do anything to get up to the windshield, uh, that's there conveniently for you. Now as we walk around to the side here, you're going to notice with this coach uh, they have the 16 inch, these are the radial tires. Uh, these are light truck tires which hold more weight and for the load capacity, even though they don't talk about ply that much anymore for the strength, they'll talk about uh, by letters. This is the E load capacity of a tire uh, with a maximum uh, filling pounds of 80 PSI. Uh, right next to the cab you're going to have foldable mirrors uh, which you can just put in nice and easy and they also have the running board steps for the driver and the passenger uh, for getting in and out very easily. When we open the door we just want to show you one thing uh, which is the 
occupant cargo carrying capacity, which is very important for safety of any vehicle. The nice thing is with this chassis being a short one on the 158 wheelbase, you have almost 2,000 pounds. Now that is occupants, it's going to be your cargo and as well as water weight. So it's always important to understand how much uh, cargo you're carrying just to be safe in the RV. As we take a look at the side of this RV, this was ordered in the deep sky. Uh, you'll see the nice blue and gray uh, decals and Winnebago tastefully trimmed it with black trim all the way around going down to the base. Uh, so it really uh, makes it look nice with that white fiberglass sidewalls. You have your entrance door here, you have your screen door, uh, all very easily um, accessible and you'll notice they have four sturdy brackets that will keep this door at a 90 degree angle and it won't interfere with your awning. This is a 15 foot power awning and you'll see they have the nice LED lights, the little uh, whitish blue effect at night. It is power so inside the RV you can just push the button, uh, bring it back in. Uh, you know, again, we didn't have it all the way out but just wanted to demonstrate that it is power and not manual. Uh, right next to the entrance here you have a tank fill and this is for your 37 gallon fresh tank. Uh, there is the city fill which we're going to get to on the other side uh, but this will be the location for that. Got a nice small, again you got black tinted windows for the kitchen. You're going to have some storage on this side which uh, is not as much we're going to get to on the other side but um, some nice compartments here that you can fit some items on your camping side. They are lockable. Right behind it you have a duplex outlet and whether or not you're hooked up to shore power or you have your generator running with AC current. Uh, this would be especially helpful if you're tailgating uh, or camping and you want to just hang out uh, on the camping side. You have a cable out feed. This is for watching cable TV. Uh, this would come out to a TV, not in. The in was on the driver's side. So you got a nice convenient location hooking up a TV, watching the game uh, while you're outside. Right above it here, we're going to have the uh, Suburban. This is your six gallon uh, water tank. This is where that's vented here. 20,000 BTU furnace for heating the, the entire coach inside. This is the vent here. Um, again, two locations uh, just right beside each other. You have some additional storage. And a nice thing to show with Winnebago, and we'll show it with the cabinetry, they will give you labels, stickers, in case you did get any damage to any uh, of the compartment doors or anything. They give you a quick little sticker to give you the part number. That way when you call up a dealership you can get that part uh, ordered nice and quickly and you don't have to kind of describe it. Again, these all are both locking so you can quickly lock all your belongings inside. Right underneath it is your engine exhaust. Um, so that's for the 6.8 liter Ford engine. Again, it is on your camping side um, and the generator which will show you exhaust is on the driver's side. Again, as we show the RV, the fiberglass looks really nice uh, in the deep sky pattern. And now let's go back and take a look at the rear of the coach. As we come around and take a look at the back of the Outlook, you'll see that they got a nice black uh, bumper here. And one of the things that that doubles as is actually for your plumbing hose. They have these little rubber caps. A lot of people always are saying, well, where do I store my hose after I clean it out? I don't want to bring it back inside. So it's nice that the Class C's and the Fords have that and you just put this back inside and it'll just lock it in. Uh, also you'll notice on the back end they got license plate holder, uh, also with the hitch. Uh, this has got a 7,500 pounds towing capacity, does have a 500 pound tongue weight. Uh, so with the Ford E350 chassis, you can still have some bike racks or storage racks. Uh, a lot of times customers are putting the nice uh, Thule. You can store all your belongings here in the back of the RV, which is very convenient. So as we look up at the roof, you'll see that it has the high marker lights, uh, which is great uh, while you're driving. And there's the backup camera, which we showed you uh, in the dash. And the nice thing is that can be on while you're driving forward and it will automatically come on when you come in reverse. Uh, on the side over here, they have actually a little step on the bumper to get you up to the roof. This ladder naturally is fixed and it has a 225 pound capacity. It's not meant to hang out on the roof and, and uh, it's just gonna get you up there or a technician if they need to check any of the roof seals or do any type of maintenance or cleaning. As we come around here on the driver's side, we're saving the best for last. This storage you'll see here compared to the smaller ones, uh, again, this is where you're going to store everything uh, inside your coach on the outside of the RV. You can almost fit a couple people if you really wanted to inside. And in this case, for you tee to green golf enthusiasts, you can see you can easily fit uh, several golf bags. Uh, my golf shoes are always there, ready to go. But you got a nice little basin here. There's a little drain. Uh, so if you did want to put anything in here to get it wet, um, you know, that's also very convenient. Now while we're in here, we want to just talk about some of Winnebago's legendary construction that often you won't see 
uh, just going to a dealer or going to an RV show, just walking around and even uh, just kind of poking around in the RV. So what we did was we wanted to first show you as far as the construction of the flooring, which is very important. I removed these four screws just for the sake of this video, just to kind of give you an idea of what Winnebago does. Uh, their flooring, unlike some competitors that will have some particle board, uh, have a lot of glues and off-gassing, Winnebago's flooring here is actually, you'll see, is three-quarter inch plywood. That's, you know, very strong floor that it even comes all the way throughout the back of the coach into the storage area. You know, that's important, especially for people that are allergic to some of the glues. You won't get that off-gassing as bad in a Winnebago motorhome. Now, carrying on to the rest of the construction, for the Winnebago, their thermal panel sidewalls, when they make the uh, construction of all theirs, the sidewalls with the high gloss, uh, fiberglass, the foam insulation, uh, they're using actually some very advanced rollers uh, in their factory that make it uh, it's seamless. And we just wanted to show you a little cross section of what that looks like. They also do all of their stitch work uh, for everything that we showed you prior inside, all of the valances and the fabrics they're doing as well. It's nice that everything is man-made in Forest City, Iowa here in the good old USA. Now, as far as the tanks, while all the manufacturers are just buying some standard uh, tanks that they're going to be using uh, for their holding tanks, fresh, the gray tank and black tank, Winnebago is actually doing a rotocast. Uh, they take these beads and put them in some molds. They put them in the oven and they're able to shape the tanks and their engineers specific to each coach. That way they can utilize not only the best center of gravity for the coach, but also the maximum capacity for each tank. So we just wanted to at least show you as well some of the construction that Winnebago is doing differently than others. <clears throat> there is a light as well inside this compartment that we're shutting here. Underneath is where your main drains are, your black and your gray tank. They are separate. Uh, as we mentioned before, each one is 41 gallons. This is the, the tube that we, we stowed in the back bumper. You just hook up that two inch right into a dump and you can pull your your toilet waste as well as your gray water, just very conveniently and easy. They are gravity and do not require a macerator. Right in front, we have your 30 amp. This is your shore power. This is a 25 foot 30 amp line that you'd plug in whether you're at a campground or you just wanna get shore power at a friend's or a relative's garage on your way. Um, again, this is just gonna plug in. Now there's one thing to mention, this does not have an automatic transfer switch. So if you're gonna need the generator while you're out and you're unable to plug in like at a park like this, you still have to plug this 30 amp into this silver transfer box, enabling that generator to power everything inside the coach. I'd say it's probably one of the, the first things that most newbies will forget to do is plug that in. They're running their generator and they say, hey, I don't have power, just because they didn't plug that back in. Recommend that you leave it plugged in while driving. Right up here, we do have your fuel. This is for your 55 gallon gas tank. Uh, this does require a minimum octane rating of 87. So when you're pulling up at the pump, just so that you know, and that's all in your Ford chassis, which was in Winnebago's uh, manuals inside. This is your cable in as it's labeled here very conveniently. So when you do go to a campground or someone's home or your, even your own home, if you're using this as, uh, as a second place for guests to stay at your home, you're gonna plug in the cable. That way they can get a cable TV feed. Uh, other than the fixed uh, antenna, which we're going to show you in a few seconds. Moving forward, we do have your city fill. We showed you the gravity fill right next to the driver's, uh, the entrance door. Uh, this is where you're going to hook up a hose and get city pressure throughout the coach, just like our homes, uh, just very easily and conveniently. You'll plug that in. And, and just so you know, every, everyone who purchases an RV from Colonial does get an RV starter kit, which includes your fresh water hose, we include a 40 to 50 PSI water regulator just to keep that pressure where it needs to be so you don't blow out some lines. Uh, everything that you need for your toiletries, for electrical adapters, it's all included in every purchase as well. Underneath here, you're gonna see you have your 18 gallon Manchester tank. All these tanks are made in the USA as well. Um, it is fixed. There is a fill cap here. Um, they are 80% fillable, being that they're liquid propane. This is going to fire up for the furnace inside the coach that we showed you a few minutes ago your three burner cooking stove. Uh, so again, having that and your hot water heater, uh, which is also the LP, uh, is gonna be um, fueled by this tank right here. This door does not lock by law because it needs to be accessible in case there is a emergency personnel that needs to get to it to shut that off because there is a valve here. Uh, so you'll notice that that will never be locked on any RV. As we move forward for power, we talked about the 30 amp landline. This is your second source for household AC current that we're used to, not talking about 12 volts. This is the gas owning 4000 generator. 
this is going to sip off of the top three quarters of your fuel tank. Uh, so again, the, the exhaust is right here. It's all controlled inside. There is a panel that you can remove here for servicing. Uh, often people will service it once a year or every 50 hours. Uh, just easily can be done by a technician or even an owning uh, facility throughout the United States. This is lockable. Again, that's the rest of your power for the RV. Now let's go take a look at the roof. So here on the roof, we're going to first talk about the construction. This is a Dicor, which is a rubberized composite roofing. What's great about it, it comes with a 12-year parts and materials warranty. Just to show you, we have a few of the vents, which we showed you from the bathroom. That's this, that skylight that gives you the extra headroom. There is a toilet vent. You have right here in the bathroom, you have that 12-volt fan. That pops up. It also gives you a nice little skylight. Uh, all of this caulking, you're always going to want to have checked at least once a year, just to make sure it doesn't get dry rotting, and that's potentially where leaks can happen. As we walk to the center of the roof, you're going to see we have a second vent that's going to give you some extra light and ventilation uh, just in the center galley area of the coach. you got the Mach 3 roof air conditioner, which we spoke about with the decibels. That's located right in front of that. Uh, up here, we have the King uh, TV antenna. Again, this is going to give you the over-the-air waves digital television, uh, which is located here. You don't have to crank it up and crank it down. Then you have a third vent. Often customers will install some vent covers, which will will be nice. That way you can keep them open all the time, keep pests and rain out. Uh, that's something that can be installed aftermarket. And lastly, as you can see, there's a lot of real estate on the roof. Uh, if you wanted to add some solar, since it doesn't come standard with the Outlook, you can do that just to keep the batteries uh, trickle charged. Thanks for watching this video of the Outlook 22E. And if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call at 1-800-265-9019. From all of us here at Colonial RV in the Jersey Coast, thanks for watching. Drive carefully.